Hello and welcome, and I'm very pleased to welcome a, from, if I say familiar face, I mean that in the nicest possible way, to Dr Gretchen Hawley. So you may remember Gretchen, we've, um, over the last couple of years really, we've done a number of uh, chats about uh, physiotherapy for people with MS or people with um, chronic conditions that makes uh, movement restrictive movement um and I, so i know ms is your is your main speciality but even what we're going to talk about today definitely applies i believe to everybody in improving their movement so gretchen welcome again thank you so much for having me and today we're going to talk about gretchen very excitingly has a book that's just launching which is um as you pulls together, Gretchen, doesn't it? All of the things that you we've spoken about before and brings them in together in a sort of really practical guide. Absolutely. Yeah, I have a lot of content. And if anyone follows me, you'll know there's YouTube videos, there's Instagram, Facebook. I post a lot of education on lots of different platforms, but it's been requested for a while now that I create something like a book where everything is all in one place. And I was really hesitant for a while because I'm a very visual learner where I like to see exercise. I like to actually see things be done. And that's why I usually opt for video-based content, but it just became clear and clear as more and more requests came in that there are visual learners in the sense they just want to read it and they want everything all in one place versus diversified on all of these different accounts and social media platforms. And so as I was putting it together, I was getting really excited because I don't have anything else like this available where it's the education and exercises all in one right in the palm of your hand. Mm. And I think it's very much, you know, having had the privilege to look at it before, you know, you use photographs and the photographs, you know, as you say, an image tells a thousand words. And and because you've made it so simple, and that's what I've always liked about everything, you make it, you cut everything down to the really basic steps that it's easy to see and to understand. Yeah, I always want it to feel simple and accessible. So often we overcomplicate things and the exercises themselves, we might think we need to do something crazy in order to improve our walking or in order to improve our speed or our endurance. When in reality, it's very simple if you break it down in the right way. And we also feel like we have to do thousands of repetitions, or we need to go above and beyond, or we need to go to a gym or outside. And in reality, and research shows this to be true, we just need to be in our home doing the right type of exercise, which is functional exercise based on neuroplasticity and based on your goals. It's nothing more complicated than that. But I also realized that that doesn't come easy to everyone. It's easy for me, probably because of my educational background as a physiotherapist, which is why I made this book too. I clearly explain, as you said, in photos, but also in text, step-by-step step of exactly how to figure out which exercises you should be doing based on the goals that you're working towards and the symptoms that you have. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things of having it in a book is that and the way that you've written it is you can dip in and out. You don't yeah. have to read it. You don't have to do step one, step two. But I think one of the most important things and what I really like about the book is it's very much to say you may have tried exercise for your before and it hasn't worked. And as you said, it's not because you're not, you've not tried hard enough or you haven't done everything in the right way. It's because of this word that I never like saying neuroplasticity. Yeah. And it's, I think that's important. And I know you describe that at the beginning of the book. And I think it's important to understand that because that, for me, is the foundation of why your exercises can really help. If you understand what neuroplasticity is about, then that's, that gives you the why. Why yes. do you do it? 
Right. And, and that's so true. I, I put that phrase in the beginning of the book and even on the back cover that if you tried exercising before and it didn't work, it's not your fault. It's not that you weren't trying hard enough and it's not that you were doing anything wrong, but most times more likely than not, it's that you weren't doing the right exercises. So often people with MS who go to see trainers or physiotherapists, they focus on strengthening the muscles, which at first glance might sound like what you need. But when you have MS, the weakness that you feel is not caused from the muscles. It's caused from the neural pathway weakness, the demyelination. So when you're exercising, especially when you're exercising to improve function to improve day-to-day -day movements and activities, you have to do exercises that strengthen the neural pathways. Once those are stronger, then your muscles can get stronger. But if you focus on it just from strengthening muscles, that's when I hear all the time of I'm stronger, but my walking's not any better. I have better balance, but the stairs are just so challenging. They're not any easier. Their, their day-to-day activities are not any easier. And so if you've tried to work on your goals before and it didn't work for you, it likely was that you weren't doing neuroplasticity based exercises. And so but neuroplasticity, I mean, that's I'm, if I've understood it correctly, is what children do very, very early on and how they learn to walk, how they to do it, to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, we can use neuroplasticity to form any type of neural pathway. So I use it a lot for our physical bodies, but it can also be used for mental exercises too. Every habit that you have, you have an association and a neural pathway for it. And so when we're talking about walking, getting up from the floor, stair climbing, walking longer distances, whatever it might be, when you have MS, we lose those neural connections and either we lose them completely or they're just weakened. And when we're babies, we don't have them to begin with. We don't walk at all, but as they keep practicing walking and they keep falling down, but they get back up and they try it again with every repetition, your brain is trying to find neural pathways that work and produce the movement that you're looking for, the desired movement. So it happens as babies, but it also can happen now. There's no reason why it can't. It does take longer and it takes more intention, but it's the same process that happens when we're babies as it can right now. It just requires the right type of exercise lots of repetition. And in the book, I go into five ways that you can increase neuroplasticity and make it happen even faster, but it all starts with knowing exactly what to do. Um, tell us one of the secrets then, how to make it faster. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. There's so many. One of my favorite ones that I've recently started implementing with my clients is urgency. And so with, with each of these five ways to increase neuroplasticity, you can either use that strategy during your exercise. For example, let's say I'm doing a marching exercise where I'm trying to lift my knee up and then down and the other side, I'm just going back and forth between lifting one leg than the other. If I want to add an urgency to that exercise, I might have this goal of doing 10 in 10 seconds or of doing finishing 20 by the time that this song ends. And so you have some form of urgency within the exercise itself, or you can implement urgency or any of these five techniques between exercises. So during your rest break, and this is what I've been loving. So do you know the toy? It's a children's toy called the Bop It. Yes. Okay. So I actually never played with that when I was younger, but I recently purchased one for those that don't know what it is. It's a children's toy and it has you uh, pull certain things, bop it, twist it, spin it. And it tells you what to do. And then you need to do what it says. Otherwise you lose the game and it's timed and there's music and the music speeds up and it definitely creates a sense of urgency. And so what I've been doing is I'll do my exercises and then I'll play one round of the bop it. And I, I build up that urgency. And then I go back and I do another round of my exercises and then I do the bop it. So you can build in the urgency in between your exercise too. Oh, oh that sounds, and it's all about making it fun, isn't it? As well, and making it easier to do. And it's not, not such a chore. 
And I, I think what um, I really liked was how the way you're explaining things gives one the confidence to feel, actually, I can do this. You know, and you're learning it's a different way to I've done it before. And it makes people feel more confident that they are going to achieve more success. Yes. Yeah. And one thing that I have at the end of every single chapter are key takeaways from the chapter. And the final bullet point in every chapter has something to do with having hope that it is possible that you can reach your goals. You can get stronger. And overall, my goal with this book is not only to give exercises and symptom management strategies, but that by having those and knowing this education and information, you feel more hopeful and empowered. Because for me, that's the biggest game changer. If you feel empowered and like you're back in control and you have confidence, that goes so far. That goes way beyond your exercise routine. And so we build up the empowerment, the hope, the confidence through knowing this information about what actually is happening in your brain and how can we get it to work for you and what exercises can you do to help improve that? Hmm. And then, you know, having you explain neuroplasticity, so we go, right, okay, we're, we're understanding why we're doing these exercises again and in a different way to before and understanding what it's doing here is what I found interesting when you were talking about you know, the, you know, if you ask people to name how many types of exercise, they might come up with a few. And you said, well, no, there was actually 10 ways yes. of exercising. And I, and I read through them. I thought, oh, yeah, yes, I hadn't thought about that. I think that was such a powerful chapter because so often when I ask people, with MS. So what, what do you think is exercise? And they'll say, you know, strengthening and stretching, or sometimes they'll say strengthening, stretching and aerobic. Like those are the components that I include. And while those are some of the most common ones, there's, as you mentioned, there's 10 over 10 types of exercises. And it's really, really important that you focus on at least six But the six that you choose should be purely based on your goals that you're working towards. For example, if you've ever felt like, well, I'm doing these strengthening exercises, but gosh, why isn't my walking any faster? Well, you train speed completely different than you train strengthening. Or one thing I hear a lot is, well, I'm getting stronger, but why can't I walk any further? And you train endurance, that walking distance, completely different than you train strength. And so I think it's important to first understand that there's different types of exercises. And then secondly, each type focuses on something different. Sometimes there is overlap where strengthening may also help with a little bit of endurance, but not too far. But most of the time, there isn't much overlap. So if you want to improve your balance, you have to do balance-based exercises. If you want to improve your walking speed, you have to practice speed-based exercises. If you want to walk further, you have to practice endurance, but you wouldn't only want to practice those one, that one area, which is why it's important to include usually six different areas. So for most people, some of those six will definitely include functional strengthening, balance, and stretching. For me, those are the three that everyone should be doing. But after that, it's up to you what you want to add in. So again, it could be speed. It could be endurance. It could be aerobic or cardio. It could be high intensity interval training. It could be a class, but it it should be a mix. Not only that, but so often when I work with clients that are only focusing on one, they often end up with some type of aches or pains because the muscles that are already strong are overcompensating, causing some aches and pains. Whereas if you had a more well-rounded approach to your exercise routine, oftentimes those aches and pains just don't happen because your muscles are working equally versus focusing on just one group or just the stronger groups. Hmm. And I mean, I, I think we all find that we can do one sport where we think actually, gosh, we're fit. And then we go and do something else and we think, oh my goodness, have I ever been to a gym in my life before? It's um, so, and that, I think that's what's good about is your book is that you can relate to it, whether you have MS or you have something else, or you're just 
Yeah, and I, I think one of those things is particularly as you get older, things like balance is, you know, balance is something that starts disappearing, whatever, you know, as you progressively get older and how you have to concentrate what you took as being the norm as you get older, you suddenly think, oh, I can't quite do what I thought I would be able to do. Yes. And that's another reason why a lot, if not all of the exercises and strategies in this book should be done as early as possible. Even if your walking is okay right now, your balance is okay. The sooner you implement these things, the sooner you will build up that strength and endurance and tolerance so that as we age, you might not even notice any regression, at least not as quickly as what you might have otherwise. And so there's no time that's too early to start doing functional exercise and working on our neural pathways. But it's also okay if you've had MS or another chronic illness for 40 years, it's never too late either. So getting these types of exercises and implementing them into your routine at whatever point you're at can help you maintain or strengthen regardless of where you're at. And so often you're right. I will share a lot of this education and people with completely different illnesses will say, oh, you know, I have Parkinson's. This, these have been helping me though, just so you know. Or someone will say, oh, I have rheumatoid arthritis and this has been so helpful. Someone else will say, oh, I gave these exercises to my 90 year old mother and she's doing so well. So yes, this book and all of my exercises are designed with multiple sclerosis in mind, but it's, as you mentioned, it's helpful for everyone, really. I I definitely think so. So what we will do is we will put this within an article, this video within an article, with some links to the previous videos we've done where we've actually got you in action, sitting, standing, marching, and all of those good things, along with a link to your book, which I'm sure is going to give some real, I think, I was going to say the word comfort, but I think it is comfort because it gives people the confidence to feel they can try these things, that they're not going to be hurting themselves, that actually they're going to be doing the the opposite. It's very positive to try these things. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest goals too, is to give you that control back and give you that confidence from the comfort of your own home. You truly, in all of the exercises in the book, I demonstrate them in on a couch and on a chair. There's nothing else that you need. You can start doing them right away based on what your goals are. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing the book in print as it's coming out very soon. Thank you very much, Gretchen. Really nice to see you again. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye, everybody.